wife's right there helping him along the way. Amen. And uh, the pastor's wife gave me her testimony how she got saved. I was like, wow. Thank the Lord for what Jesus does. Changes lives. And, uh, and we're going to cling to the old rugged cross. Amen. We're going to just stay, stay right where he wants us till he comes for us. Oh, by the way, he could come today. Right. I'd be willing to give up all my meetings <laughs> if the Lord could come today. Plus, I'd get to see my wife today, too. Amen. Whoa. We shall meet in the air, and so shall we have our view of the Lord. Take your Bibles and go to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's stand together. I want to read this chapter. It's, a, it's really a statement of eschatology, what's going to happen in our future. I'm glad the Lord has it all figured out. You know, this COVID did not take God by surprise. I know that the politicians were scratching their heads, but God wasn't. Did it ever occur to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? He knows the end from the beginning. He's got it all figured out. And the Father's going to let Jesus know when it's time to come and get us. And I'm excited about it. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, 2 Peter 3, 2. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the prophet, holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they will, willingly, are what? ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overthrown with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we according to His promise, here we go, we look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, see that ye look for such things. Be diligent that ye may be found of Him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, 
in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we speak tonight, today about Your coming, Your love for lost sinners, Your plan of redemption before it's too late, we rejoice that we have found You whom our soul loveth. Please speak to us today. Take this message and drive it home to our hearts. For your glory and for the advancement of your kingdom, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'd like to title this message, What on Earth is This World Coming to? I also have another message on what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? Did you get that? What on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? That's out of the book of Acts. But I want to speak about the coming of the Lord. What on earth is this world coming to? Just in the last few years, we've seen a turn in our country against God. People used to hide in closets in their sin. But now it's out in the open. There used to be a day when we called evil evil and we called good good, but now we've come to the place where we've changed our vocabulary and we call evil good and good evil. Why would anybody want to go to church where they steal your money? Why would you go to church where you would feel convicted of your sin? The philosophy of this world is eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. The old Epicurean philosophy of life. But I'm here to tell you that as the world progressively gets more wicked, Christians ought to become more righteous. As ugly as sin is, the joy of the Lord ought to be sweet. We ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. There's nobody that has it better than those that know and love Jesus. Right? Oh, His name is so precious. The songwriter wrote, No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I love my wife, but she nor I hold a candle to the love of the Lord Jesus. Isn't it wonderful to know the Lord? In this passage of Scripture, I want to break it down basically into four truths for the end time. Number one, let's take a look at the cynical scoffers. The cynical scoffers. The Bible calls them in verse 7, ungodly men. We're living in a perverse generation. The Bible talks about perilous times coming. Men shall be lovers of their own self. Don't take too many selfies of yourself. Somebody will think you've got a case on yourself. I know you're beautiful, but Jesus is more beautiful. Amen. We've come to a day when people are lovers of pleasure more than they are lovers of God. The interesting thing is they're ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the reason that is, is because they don't have the Spirit to teach them. They're lost in need of a Savior. Scoffers make fun of God. 
They make fun of the preacher. Have you ever noticed programs on TV where they make the preacher look like an idiot? They, they blaspheme God. Today, people use all kinds of filthy language. It reveals the condition of their heart. Some people wouldn't even have a vocabulary if they stopped cussing. So we're living in a day where people have come to the place where they are cynical scoffers. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They say, where is the promise of His coming? They make fun of God. Nothing's changed, they say in verse 4. The Bible says they're still ignorant, verse 5. Did they forget about Noah and the flood? In, uh, Ken Ham has a replica of the ark. Boy, did they get a lot of protests when that went up. They're trying to discredit God. They're saying that Jonah wasn't swallowed by a great fish. And on and on it goes. They will do anything. They'll even say lies to discredit truth. If they say something's a lie that's, that's not a lie, some people will believe it just because they said it. And what happens is people join movements of untruth. And they promote it as truth. The rewriting of our history in America. There was on TV the other night a, a, a woman that was a school teacher ranting and raving against Christianity and people that know the Lord. Sick. She's teaching the children. It's awful. Now they take great pleasure in making fun of God. They're false teachers. Look at chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there are false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. You know what a damnable heresy is? That Jesus is not the only way to heaven. That's a damnable heresy. Even denying the Lord. Some would like to... You know, I saw a, a, a poster that people were... They were picketing and they had a poster. And they said, if Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't have to be, be putting up with this Jesus. How wicked is that? People parade around promoting all this nonsense. Sad, isn't it? Notice what else it says here. Even denying the Lord that brought them, bought them, and bringing them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The truth is evil spoken of. There is no such thing as hell. That's what they say. One Sunday I came, got ready to teach my Sunday school class at Annsville. The Holy Spirit said, you're not going to pre-teach your class today. I thought, wow, what's the Lord got planned? He just impressed upon my heart. He said, just tell them this. Tell them that you do not believe in a literal burning hell. And ask them to prove to you that there is a burning hell. So I said, I don't believe there's a literal burning hell. And if you believe there is one, prove it to me. And I sat down. And I let them teach me. Somebody said, where, where, where is it? Where's the rich man and Lazarus in the Bible? I said, it's in the Gospels. I know that. Yeah, okay. Boy, they're hunting through there, searching. They're in their concordance in the back of their Bible. They found it. Luke 16. 
By the time that class was to be over, they had convinced me that there was a literal burning hell. Amen. Man, they were shocked I did that to them, so I shocked them the next Sunday. And I said, I don't believe there's a literal heaven. Boy, they, they had no trouble proving that. Man, they went over to Revelation. They took me through the city four square. And they, they just pumped me full of knowledge and truth about heaven. Woo, I got excited. I don't know. I can't remember how many weeks I did that, but I sure enjoyed finding out that the people that I'd been pastoring knew the Word of God. Now, it took them a while to find it, but they found it. I want to encourage everybody here, if there's a question that you've never had answered, a spiritual question that you've always wondered about, write the question down and then get in your Bible and find the answer. We ought to be Bereans, amen? Searching the Scriptures. And I want to say to you that if the world can try to find a false truth, that's, a, that's an interesting word, if they can find a cynical attitude toward God's Word and try to put down God, we ought to lift Him up and exalt Him for who He is. Oh my. Notice this. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the truth of way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of long time lingereth not, and their damnation stumbleth not. I think about these TV evangelists and some of the things that they're doing. God telling them that they needed, that they needed millions of dollars to buy a Learjet. Or one, one uh, evangelist got up and said, I'm now a billionaire. As though that's something to be proud of. I don't understand it. They're using people. They're merchandising people. This is what it says about lost people, not saved people. People that are cynical skeptics. Oh, they can talk about Jesus. But their motive is all about themselves and what they want to accomplish. And I want to tell you, those people are going to be in serious trouble. Some of them are not going to make it to the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to make it to the great white throne judgment and all the people that followed them. They're going to be ushered into a place called hell. Cynical scoffers. So much for that, amen? I'm sick and tired of cynical scoffers. So every time you find one, talk to them. <laughs> hey Amen. I like I like to put people on edge. I was over here at the there was a little little flea market up here in town and yesterday, so I thought I'll stop and check it out and see if there's anything in there I need. There's a guy there with this great big huge blonde bird beard. It was massive. He wasn't even wearing shoes. I said, man, you have got a beard right there. <laughs> he looked at me and smiled. I said, you know, Jesus had a beard. <laughs> he thought, wow, okay. <laughs> I said, they pulled it from his face. And he suffered and bled and died to save us. try to witness to people that are rough. Don't be afraid of them. Jesus can even save them. <laughs> huh? Sometimes we're afraid of those kind of people. Yeah. We've got a lot of homosexuals and lesbians coming out of the woodwork, it seems. Those people need Jesus. We ought to love them and pray for them to get saved. That brings me to my second point. The second point in this passage is a sensitive Savior. When man is at his worst, Jesus is at his best. I want you to notice here in verse 8 and 9, 
Going back to 2 Peter chapter 3, you'll notice I, under, I circled the word beloved in verse 1. I circled the word beloved in verse 8. I circled the word beloved in verse 14. I circled the word beloved in verse 15 and 17. Did you know that the Lord Jesus comes to us by the inspiration of the Spirit of God to let us know that we are loved? We are loved. God is a sensitive Savior. He loves us. He's long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Jesus is not looking to take men down to hell, but to save them from their sins and to translate them from their sinful, cursed state to a kingdom of God by his dear Son. What a sensitive Savior. Remember that woman taken in adultery? All these religious leaders have had their stones ready. They circled around that woman and boy, they were ready to stone her. According to the Old Testament law, she deserved to be stoned. There is a penalty for sin. Have we forgotten that? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Judgment's coming to those that sin. All of us, same laws. And I can just see them with their hands with a, with a stone in each hand. Boy, they're ready to tell the Lord Jesus she deserves to die. He wrote something in the sand. He said, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. I thought he was supposed to be judging the woman. He was judging those that wanted to kill her. He's a loving, long-suffering Savior. He told her, just go and sin no more. <laughs> the Lord's not as tough on people as we are. Sometimes we're meaner than Jesus. <laughs> we have our opinions. And to God, they're probably bitternesses. Irritableness. Got to straighten everybody else out. Jesus wants to love everyone to a saving knowledge of himself. He's a God that is a sensitive, caring, loving Savior. He doesn't want to offend. He wants to save. We offend God by our actions. We've already offended God. In fact, we're already condemned, the Bible says in John 3. Already condemned. We've condemned ourselves. God didn't condemn man. He came to save man. He's a sensitive Savior. Don't you love Him for it? A sensitive Savior. You know what we need to do? We need to go out of here and love people like Jesus loves people. Our dear brother here. Give me your name again, brother. Milt? Milt? Phil, maybe many of you have heard the story about a tarp was missing from his property and the Lord told him to take a walk and yeah. led that guy to Christ. I want to tell you, that thrilled my heart. He said, why am I taking a walk? Well, God's got something for you to do. You better be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Amen. Sometimes I'm not as sensitive as I should be. Sometimes we're afraid of what people are going to think of us. I'd rather see him saved and then they'd really like us. Your, your dearest friend's the one that's going to lead you to Christ. Amen. Yeah. My dad is my favorite. The older I get, the better my dad is to me. <laughs> my dad was a strict disciplinarian. 
He applied the Board of Education to the seat of knowledge. <laughs> we went on whaling expeditions and everything. Bloodshed in the woodshed, eh? Hey! But he's the one that said to me, Daniel, I've never seen any indication that you're saved, and that was my day of salvation. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Amen. I guess sometimes God has to be tough with us because we're so hardened. I gave my dad more trouble than all my brothers combined, and I'm not bragging. I'm ashamed to say that to you. He said to me one time, Daniel, you're like King Ahab. You did more to did King Ahab did more to provoke the Lord than all the other kings combined. He said that to me. He loved me. His love was so great for me that he told me the truth. Amen. What I'm trying to say to you is that we have a loving sensitive Savior that is wanting to do great things to bring us to that place where we are everything He desires us to be. Number three, serious judgment is coming. Serious judgment is coming. I believe that the tribulation period is going to come. Seven year tribulation. I believe we're going to be taken out before the tribulation. Amen. Amen. That's our blessed hope. Amen. We don't have to go through that. Now we may feel a little bit of it as it, it, about the time it hits. I, sometimes I think, boy, we're, our, our nation's getting in trouble, but we, we've never really received any persecution. Other preachers in Burkina Faso, uh, West Africa, uh, they, they told my nephew to get out of there because they were killing preachers, national preachers, and tearing up churches. I'm sure some things have been going on in Honduras also. There, there's, a, there's an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ and they want to destroy Christianity. They want to eliminate it. We'll not have this man to reign over us. Yeah. That's their attitude. So God's going to say, all right. I've tried to love you. I've bent over backwards to be there for you. I've delivered you from pestilence and I've given you opportunities to prosper. I don't think a nation's been any more blessed than America's been blessed. Right. Good night. We are rich. Yep. Two dollars a day, you said? Sixty-five percent. 65% percent of Hondurans, two dollars a day? I just can't even fathom that. God help us. I'm convicted thinking about it. Amen. We've got so much. But God says, okay, serious judgment's coming. And here it is in verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Aren't you glad He's coming when we least expect it? I've always said, Lord, would you come when I'm preaching? Wouldn't that be the coolest thing? You hear that trumpet? We're going to be jerked off this world. Gone. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Gone. Oh, you talk about exciting. Your faith, your faith will become sight. And we'll be marched into the glorious presence of our Savior Jesus Christ. Into a perfect state. All of your imperfections will be gone. That'll be pretty cool. <laughs> Imagine that. I'll have a perfect wife and she'll have a perfect husband. <laughs> How does that sound? <laughs> Amen. I want you to notice that he's coming as a thief in the night. Acts 1 7 says, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. She shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. We shall be witnesses unto him there in Acts 20. The Bible says they shall not escape. Heaven and earth, or heavens, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. 
the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved unto their own destruction. Listen, everything you see is going to melt with fervent heat. God's shutting this world down. It's going to be destroyed completely once it's all done. So don't, don't put a lot of don't put a lot of pleasure in things. We probably, all of us probably have more than we need, right? Why don't you get rid of some stuff? You know, we, during COVID, we, had, we were off the road for 12 weeks, and, and uh, so we decided to sell stuff, and we sold 82 items and made $2,200. Just junk laying around the house we didn't need, right? Let's give that to missions, amen? Let's do something with it that will last for eternity, that will result in people coming to know the Lord. Amen. Serious judgment's coming. We need to do everything we can to sow the seed of the Word of God so that we can reap a harvest before it comes to an end. Serious judgment's coming. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. Our works are going to be judged. The fire shall try every man's works of what sort it is. We're either going to suffer loss or we're going to receive a reward. Let's live for spiritual things, for eternal things. You can't take it with you. And maybe some of you don't want your kids or grandkids to have it. Amen. I've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of that. People spending people's fortunes and they, they left money to people that they didn't even want them to have it. But they felt obligated to do it. I'm just simply saying that we ought to live with the coming of the Lord in mind and prepare ourselves to meet Him and not let anything control us or consume us other than our great God. Let's, let's turn our affection from things to our great God. Doesn't mean you can't have nice things. I'm not saying that. But oh, let's give God our very best. Judgment is coming. Number four. You know what God's looking for in these last days? Sanctified saints. Number four. He tells us what He wants us to be like. Notice what He said in verse one. The second epistle, be loved. He's talking to us. I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of what? Remembrance. I want you to remember who I am and what I've done for you. Amen. I want you to live with a pure mind. Look at verse 11. See then that all these things shall be dissolved. All these things that we think are so important are going to be dissolved. Then he asks the question. Or the statement, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What's he saying? He's saying that we are to sanctify our we are to be sanctified, set apart for God. What kind of a Christian should I be? I should be a holy Christian. My conversation should be holy. And I should be a godly person. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Are you content today? Or is there a bunch of stuff you want? Are you content with what you have? If God never gave you any more than you have, would that be enough? It'd be more than enough. He's telling us that we, if we're going to be sanctified saints, we're going to be holy in our conversation. We're going to be godly. Notice verse 12. Look for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. He goes on to speak about how the elements are going to melt with fervent heat again. Nevertheless, we according to His promise look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, here he is, he's talking again to us about being sanctified saints. See that ye look for such things. Be diligent that ye might be found of him in what? Peace. 
peace. Everything is right. Everything's peaceful between God and I. Can you say that? He's happy with me and I'm thrilled with Him. I don't have any spots. You know, back during the days of the animal sacrifice, they couldn't offer to God a sacrifice that had blemishes. A lot of Christians have spots. A spot of bitterness, a spot of pride, a spot of laziness, a spot of discontentment, a spot of secret sin. We've got to get rid of those spots. Without spot. Notice also, and blameless. Ooh, that's a tall order right there. If I knew that somebody had something against me right now, I would go to them. The Holy Spirit says to me, Daniel, you offended somebody and you didn't realize it. You go to them and get it straightened out. Don't go up to somebody and say, now if I offended you, <laughs> what you're saying is, I don't think I did, but you think I did. That's, that's, that's garbage. Just say, I offended you. I said some things that I sh maybe they were true, but I shouldn't have said them. I didn't help our relationship, and I'm asking you for forgiveness. I want to stand before God blameless. There have been a few times I've had to go to my wife before the service began. I said, honey, I was sharp with you this morning. I didn't speak to you in love. And I need you to forgive me. I can't get up there and preach unless I get that forgiven. That I did. You know why? Because she loves God more than she loves me. Amen. I'm not lovable. But he is. Amen. None of us are lovable all the time. That's why we have to go and say we're sorry. You ought to get used to saying that. I'm sorry I offended you. Hmm? If somebody offends you, don't go and say, you offended me. No, just say, Lord, take care of it. It doesn't bother me if people persecute me and make fun of me or laugh at me or talk against me or gossip about me. I'm dead, Romans 6. Yeah. Amen. You couldn't do anything to hurt me if I'm right with God. Do you see what he's talking about? The sanctified saint has no spots, and he is blameless. She is blameless. Look also with me at verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, here he is speaking to us in love again, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own what? Steadfastness. There is such a thing of not finishing well. We can fall from our own steadfastness if we allow the wicked one to get in. He wants to take, us, take away from us our steadfastness. He wants to take from us our faithfulness. He wants to take from us our generosity. He wants to take from us our compassion. And what he's saying is here, don't fall from your own steadfastness. You know what makes a person fall and get out of the service of the Lord or get bitter and not be used of God? That's what falling is about. It's because we have made decisions without God's divine intervention. Be careful about drawing conclusions. You should never draw a conclusion about anything until you've prayed about it. You've been hurt. You've been hurt. Everybody here has been hurt. Everybody
everybody here has a gripe. Yeah, we do. But we don't want to talk about it. Because we're supposed to be dead to it. And alive unto Christ. Christ can't be seen if we're seen. Amen? Now how in the world in 2021 can we have sanctified saints? They die to self. You can't be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit unless you're empty. If you brought in a five-gallon gasoline can and it was full of water, could I fill it? It's already full. But I must empty out that water out of that can before I can fill it. We've got to get rid of all of the stuff that's in us that ought not to be there in order for us to be filled with the power of the Spirit of God. So what do we do? We get along with God. We say, Lord, is there anything in my life that ought not to be there? If I'm going to be a sanctified saint, as you want me to be, when you come for me, I've got to make sure I'm empty. Amen. Just think, is there anything that I need to take care of, Lord? Is there anyone I need to go to? And apologize? Is there anyone that I need to talk to? That I've hurt? I want to make sure that there's nothing between my soul and the Savior, and there's nothing between me and anybody else that's walking on this earth. I don't care who they are. I'm going to empty out all that stuff. The bitterness, the laziness, all the things that come into my life that hurt me. I'm getting rid of them. And then, <laughs> the moment you, you're empty, God starts filling you. Tonight I'm going to be talking about that song we just sang at the, just before I preached. Set my soul afire. I'm going to be preaching on the fire of God tonight. And boy, we need God's fire Fire purifies. Amen? It takes the dross out of our lives. And I pray that God will help us. Let's not fall from our own steadfastness. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we believe You're coming. We believe the end is close. We don't know when You're coming, but we want to be ready. Help us to get ready right now. Is there anyone here that's not saved? If you're not saved, you're going to hell. But if you get saved, you'll be going to heaven. Amen? Is there anyone here that needs to get right with somebody? Or you need to empty out maybe the things that you're doing in secret, the things in your life that aren't pleasing Him. I'd like us all to stand. We're going to have a piano softly play. The altar's yours. Would you come and say, Lord, I want to be a sanctified saint. Would you come? Oh God, please help us. This is where Satan tries to stop us. Another way the devil wants to keep us from making a decision to empty out self. Oh Lord, please help us to be nauseated by our own sin to where we can't stand it anymore. Cleanse us. Make us pure and clean. Don't let us go another day in rebellion against you or anyone else. May we experience the filling and the power of your Spirit in our lives. Oh God, I want you to, I want you to fill me. I'm tired of being selfish. I'm tired of wanting my own way. Help me to want your way. May I be fully satisfied in you. May the things of this world 
grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and your grace. Help us, please, Lord, to have the filling of your power and your spirit in our lives. Pastor, you come and close as you see fit. us to do it in our own power. He just wants us to be empty. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the message. Lord, I look forward to hearing it. From heaven again tonight. So, Lord, I pray right now you put it upon people's hearts and minds to be back again this evening mm. to hear the Word of God preach. Lord, we do thank you for this time, for this hour for the work that you've done. Now, Lord, we pray that as we conclude this service and, and head our separate ways, that you give, give us a sensitive ear. Mm. Lord, you never stop Amen. trying to speak to us. Yes, thank you, Lord. We're so thankful that your spirit goes with us when we leave this place. Thank you for your dwelling presence in our mm -hmm. lives. Help us be tuned in to what he wants us to do this day, where he wants us to go, what he wants us to say, how he wants us to stay out. Lord, I thank you again for the message from Brother Knickerbocker. And we ask that you bless us now as we leave. Thank you for, for the purpose and the passion and the mission that you've given him the country of Honduras. And we just pray that you bless him as you use him to reach the lost before the kingdom of Christ's sake. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Mm -hmm. We ask that you bless us as you always do as we head our separate ways. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.